There is an amazing tool out of Oracle Labs that I've been covering for a few years, and it's called Graal VM. Today, we're going to talk to a developer advocate for Graal VM, Alina Yurenko. But first, let me welcome you to Oracle Developer News, where we bring the Oracle Developer Newsletter to life. Alina, welcome to the broadcast. Every month, it seems like there's more coming out of Graal VM. So you have a new release, right? Hi, Alex. I'm super happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. So yeah, we constantly have something new coming up with Crawl VM. For example, a few weeks ago, we had our new release, which is 21.2. It's a feature release, so there are quite a few cool and exciting things in it. And I would be happy to talk a bit more about it with you and the developers that are watching this channel. You shared some cryptic notes with me. What is Java 8, 11, 16 possible? What's, what's going on there? Yeah, those are cryptic. Those are like for my internal use. So what I mean here is that uh, if you want to get Crawl VM and you can do so from Crawl VM org, right? You can get it for all those different Java versions, right? So we have builds available for Java 8, for Java 11, for Java 16. So tell me what's new with native image. Yeah, so native image is the part of Crawl VM that actually allows you to take a Java application and compile it ahead of time into an active executable. And this way, this application will have very fast startup time and also will use, will use very little memory. So where we see it used, uh, it's, I would say quite often, is for example, in cloud deployments, where you actually want your application to start fast and use as little resources as possible. Mm -hmm. So yeah, as you're saying, this is a very cool part of the project and we see a lot of excitement around it. And uh, there were quite a few great changes in this release in the native image part. So one of them is that we have now new Maven and Gradle plugins that allow you to simplify this process of building, running, and testing your Java applications as native images. So basically to make the process easier for you. Mm -hmm. And one thing that those plugins also enable is that now we also have JUnit support available for native image. So you can be sure that your code uh, behaves as you expect it to behave in the native image mode as well. And this could be specifically interesting also for the libraries authors who also want to make, to make sure that their libraries behave as they would expect and work correctly in the native image mode as well. So this is a very cool update and we think many people who are using native image will appreciate it as well. Right, because that going back to what Graal VM really does, and it does so many different things, one of the yeah, one of the things that it does is it makes it easy if you want to write your own language or your own framework or your own libraries. So, so you're saying this is growing that capability. So, um, so not native image specifically, right? So native image is okay. more about right, compiling Java applications ahead of time into native executables. But as you're saying, yes, it is absolutely possible to write your own language and run it on Graal VM use one of the languages that we are offering as a team or that there even is this community effort to implement more languages on Graal VM. You also talked about using Java Flight Recorder. I wrote about the Flight Recorder in a recent Java Magazine article talking about hidden tools that are mm -hmm. inside the JDK, but now you've got JFR also inside native image. It's an amazing update, right? Because now you can use JFR, which is a very popular tool for monitoring and kind of collecting diagnostics information of your Java application. And uh, now you can also use it in native image as well. So in this release in 21.2, it was introduced as a, like an initial support, right? So there is infrastructure for it and you can monitor some events, such as custom events, for example, but we will keep expanding its capabilities and add more features in upcoming releases. So stay tuned for this. And one more thing I wanted to add regarding GFR is this is something that was developed by our engineers from Oracle Labs in collaboration with engineers from Red Hat. So it's a community effort as well. Oh, wow, that's great. Everything about native image, going back to your point about what it's great for, mm -hmm. so it, it makes things run faster. Is that correct? Uh, start faster and use less resources. That would be, I guess, the most accurate uh, description. Right. So you said something like 20% faster build time and 9% less memory. Yes. Yeah, so this is something I wanted to mention in terms of like the whole developer experience around native image. So this is something we've been working on for a while now. So we want to make sure that in addition to this great performance and uh, kind of resources savings. We also want to make sure that your developer experience, the way you kind of interact with native image, the way you build your applications is also great. 
over the past few releases, we've been working on making sure that the native image compilation process is not faster and the process of compilation itself is also using less memory. And this is something, these numbers that you've uh, cited, this is something we've saw people from the community kind of reporting back to us. Is that leading into that, those compiler optimizations and vectorization optimizations and things like that? Yes, yeah, so that, that is a different thing that I want to talk about, right? So we've talked about... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like you're just continually putting me straight, Alina. That's great. <laughs> Kind of that's a bit confusing, right? But uh, so we've been talking about native image, right? But that is also like a big part of the project, which is compiler and this ability that Crawl VM gives you to write to run your Java applications as you normally would on any other JDK, right? So okay. you can do native image, or you you can with Crawl VM get this choice, right? You can compile your application as native image, or you can run it on Crawl VM as you would run it on any other JDK, right? Just in this scenario, we will replace uh, a top tier compiler for you. So we will give you a VM compiler as a top tier compiler. But that's like a different way and in, in which you can run your Java applications. And in fact, in this one, this transition and this migration is very easy for you. And the reason why you could be looking and uh, running your applications on VM in this JIT mode is because VM as a compiler contains quite a few new optimizations. Right. So many, many applications, they will see performance improvements by switching to VM. And this is something that we actually constantly work on. So with, with each release, we introduce some new optimizations and new updates to make sure that we can run your applications faster with each release. So maybe if uh, somebody is using an older version of Crawl VM and they are interested in getting more performance, now might be a very good time to switch to 21.2 because in this release specifically, we've added quite a bit of new optimizations that is in both community edition and also an enterprise edition. Right. Um, there are many of them. One uh, that I want to mention perhaps specifically is uh, automatic vectorization that enables the compiler to benefit from single instruction multiple data operation on new generation of processor architectures. Mm. Uh, this is just one, but there are many, many more optimizations in this release. Some of them are enabled by default and some of them are kind of available to you and they can you can enable them using a corresponding flag. And this is something we actually want to encourage people to do. So we, uh, when introducing new changes, we could really use feedback, right? So if you tried any of those new features and you could share your feedback with us, share maybe some benchmarks numbers, that would be very helpful as well. Oh, that's awesome. So uh, I'm probably going to get this wrong too, but I mean, but those types of optimizations are the types of things that companies like Twitter have turned to, to see better performance on their servers. Yeah, that's exactly uh, how Twitter is using Crawl VM, right? So they are using the compiler part. And uh, the reason to do so is because they have a lot of uh, Scala workloads and Scala workloads is something that Crawl VM as a compiler can optimize particularly well. And just to switch into this compiler, they say that they saw very significant performance improvements. And what is interesting with companies or teams like Twitter is at this scale, every performance optimization brings so much value Right, right. That's fantastic. The thing I wanted to mention about tools, when building and running applications, you could really use some good tools uh, as well, right? And the, the tools that you can use with Crawl VM is, for example, our Visual Studio Code extension pack. So for Visual Studio Code, we offer this pack of extensions that allow you to build and test and debug applications that are written in Crawl VM languages. So Java, JavaScript, Python, R. And what is, I think, particularly interesting, uh, you can also use this extension, these extensions for polyglot applications. Because when you do polyglot applications, it is particularly important that you have good tooling to make those applications happen. Mm -hmm. So there is one tool I wanted to mention, and another one is Visual VM, which is like an all-in-one monitoring and troubleshooting tool. Mm -hmm. And what is new in Visual VM is it now it got this uh, feature that it, its functionality can be controlled from outside, so like from command line or from other tools like IDEs. And now what you can do is, as you're working in your IDE, such as, for example, VS Code, you can command Visual VM right from your IDE to go and profile your code. And there, as you are looking at the data, let's say in CPU sampler or heap viewer, you can use when, for example, when you find that issue, right, so that place that it may be causing problems or looking suspiciously, you can use the feature go to source and be 
kind of switched back to the exact place that might be causing this issue. So making you kind of efficient and discovering and fixing su such problems. Oh, so wow. I think the feeling is yeah, quite helpful and also like looking forward to for feedback and help uh, hoping that people will find it useful as well. Right. So, you know, you're talking a lot about, about feedback and about community and, and another exciting collaboration that we put in the newsletter as well is this use of GraalVM at, at Facebook. So can you tell us what they're doing at Facebook with GraalVM? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we've been talking a bit about performance as well, right, in this uh, conversation and the case that you mentioned of Twitter, right, I think is super relevant to this story of how Facebook is using GraalVM, right, because in the root, it's basically for the same reason. They were also looking for a way to get more performance for their applications, and they discovered Grow VM this way, and they decided to evaluate it. And what they are using it for specifically is to run their Apache Spark workloads, which is an analytics engine for big data processing. And by switching to Grow VM, they saw significant performance improvements of so things like 10% reduction in CPU usage and some other performance metrics as well, such as GC times and other metrics. Mm -hmm. And they said that like they are using Grow VM, as I mentioned, right, as the compiler part, so in jet mode. And they said that uh, some of the compiler optimizations in Grow VM, such as polymorphic inlining, partial Skype analysis, like they dig a bit deeper to understand where these performance improvements are coming from. And they discovered that those are the optimizations that are listed in some more but they are coming from GraalVM as a compiler. Oh, that's great. Well, that's really exciting, Alina. Thank you for joining me for Oracle Developer News. And I will share some links about where to find some of these advances, although you can also find them in the developer newsletter. And I hope to see you again in person soon one of these years. That's what I'm hoping as well.